Hey, what's good, fam? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com, Alabama. The Crimson Tide now 7-0 and zero on the season after defeating Kentucky 63-3. to three. All right, this is an SEC opponent, and I'm um, looking at Trey right here to my right. It's like, my goodness. I mean, what Alabama has been able to do uh, throughout the first seven games of the season has been fantastic. And, of course, there are some things to nitpick with this team, and I think the first half of the game, um, you know, I, I would be curious to get Nick Saban's thoughts. And, of course, we'll have his press conference, um, which you can watch in its entirety coming up on BamaInsider.com. So be sure and hit that uh, subscribe button and also hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate you guys being here, but definitely hit the thumbs up button. That'll broadcast our channel out to other Alabama Crimson Tide football fans. Think about this real quick. And, and Trey, this Trey just brought this up. Georgia beat Kentucky. What was it? 14 to 3? 13 3. Yeah. And Alabama beats Kentucky 63 to 3. Um, I want to get your thoughts. I want to get your comments inside the comment box. We appreciate it. Of course, we appreciate all the super chats as well. Um, and while we wait for our calls, the call online number is at the bottom of the screen. 205-850-0883. Uh, maybe I'll uh enhance the call online number a little bit bigger. 205-850-0883. Um, 0883 is a call online number. I got John. He is our producer behind the glass. So when you call into the show, he will field your call and then I will take the calls as they come in. First things first, let's look at the stat box right here. And um, I, I think I can make that uh, stat box a little bit larger for you. So Alabama, as I mentioned, 63 to three victory over Kentucky. We kind of just look at the stats right now. When we wait for our calls and the call online number is open. Mac Jones distributed the football. Um, I thought he could have done a little bit better in that first half, right? I, I think there was a couple of throws that could have been intercepted, quite frankly. 16 to 24. So efficiency-wise, not his best overall game, but he still threw for 230 yards, uh, had two touchdowns, a quarterback rating of 166 on the game. We also got to see Bryce Young stepped into the game um, in the third quarter. Uh, I have it written down right here with five minutes to go, so plenty of time for him to get some opportunities. He was two for two, 53 yards with one touchdown. Um, I loved how he was able to evade the, the defender and uh, you know keep his eyes downfield and uh, you know continue to make that throw for a touchdown that was to Devontae Smith. Smith, and we already got some callers on the line. I'll get to those in just a second. Let me kind of run through these stats real quick. As you can see, Jace McQuellen actually led the team in rushing 99 yards for a true freshman. That is unbelievable. And only 10 opportunities in the second half. He had a touchdown, longest of 23 yards. Najee Harris, 13 attempts, 83 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I believe he has 16 touchdowns now on the season, which is really incredible. And then you also have Roy Dale Williams uh, saw some opportunities as well. 10 carries for 30 yards and a touchdown. And then, of course, Devontae Smith, nine receptions, 144 yards with two touchdowns, targeted 13 times. Also want to get your thoughts on Devontae Smith returning punts in the later part of the game. Um, kind of get your take on that. And I do have some defensive stats that I will pipe in uh, momentarily, but we will take uh, our, our first caller of uh, the night. And um, I believe uh, we, we got Cam from Georgia and just talking about the game. Here we go. Cam, what's up, buddy, man? Thanks for joining us during the watch party. And, um, you know, here to talk about Alabama's 63-3 to victory over Kentucky. Uh, give me your thoughts on the game, buddy. Cal? Yeah, Cam, go ahead, man. You're on. Oh, no, this, this isn't Cam. This is Jarek. I, uh, I don't know if they skipped him or not, or but. Okay. All right. Me on here. Okay. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll get to our uh, next caller in just a second. But, um. Let's see. Um, go go ahead, uh, Jarek. Appreciate it, man. Go on. You're, you're on the line, man. Yep. Um, I, this was a great victory for Alabama. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think that, you know, them coming off of a three-week layoff, I think, you know. This... I think, uh, hold on. We're having a quick, uh, oops, hold on. One, one second, guys. Give me one second. Let's get um hey Jarek, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like I was saying, I, this was a great win for Alabama, especially come off of a, that three week layoff that they had. Um, you know, this was coming into this game right here, I I definitely thought that Alabama was gonna have a slow start, um, especially when you're going against a good defense like Kentucky. Um, I, I do believe Kentucky actually has the best defense in the SEC, so you know, definitely was going to be a little bit of a slow start from the offensive side of the ball. Was you know that's to kind of be expected. Uh, I was I was really really impressed with the defensive side of the ball. How we didn't kind of, you know, we, we did start a little bit rough. You know, again that's that's to be expected. But 
you know, again, the, the open field tackling, the gap responsibilities, um, and, and, and again, the fact that we didn't miss a lot of those, again, those open field tackles, just can't really stress that enough. Mm-hmm. Um, are there some things that we need to get better and that we need to fix? Of course, on the defensive side of the ball, but overall wise, uh, you know, I, the effort from what we saw late in the Georgia game, from the Tennessee game, and from what we saw from the Mississippi State game, Bama has gotten better. Uh, the progression is getting better for this Alabama, this young defensive uh, this unit. I thought the secondary ball, their uh, behinds, their uh, behinds off, um, again, especially when it came to that open field tackling phase there. Um, and then, you know, I was really extremely pl- uh, impressed with the young players. Um, the fact that we were able to see Jason McCallum, I, you know, I know, you know, with Trey Sanders um, being out, you know, think, you know, because of the that car crash, you know, mm-hmm. he had to step up in there and he had a phenomenal showing. You know, he had, like you said, you know, what, 99 yards. Yeah. Uh, the thing I was really impressed about him was the fact that he didn't go down after first contact. It seemed like whenever he would get hit in the line of scrimmage or, you know, or he, if he would run down the field, it, it didn't really matter. He would not go down after first contact. It's like he would gain more yards after contact. So sh- so really showing that competitive nature, showing that toughness. I would say him and Rodell Williams, um, I did, you know, and uh, I, I just definitely believe that, again, from these young players, more we see, especially from that running game, we all know Nigel Harris is going to be going turning pro, and Brian Robinson is gone, and there's some uncertainty about Trey Sanders going forward that we were able to see these, these young backs perform at a very, very high level today. Your thoughts on uh, Bryce Young. We got to see him tonight. Um, he was two for two through a touchdown pass. Um, I loved how he ev- evaded the defender um, and was able to get the ball to Smitty for his first career touchdown. Your thoughts on the young quarterback? Yeah, uh, he was flawless. I mean, like, it's, it's two passes, but yeah, man, he yeah, was yeah. flawless. I mean, both passes were – NFL. those were NFL throws. I mean – the first one down the, I mean, down the foot. I mean, that, that's just that's per, that's perfect product placement right there, man. It's just it, it, you you can't you, you can't throw a better ball than what Bryce Young did there. And then the second throw, he, I mean, it was a bullet. I mean, you know, he scrambled, he he invaded the defender, went to his right, mm-hmm. and uh, again, just just the way he, Kyle, the way he threw that ball, a lot of NFL quarterbacks can't even make between two defenders. And he didn't even put a lot of zip on the throw. It yeah. just it was he, he threw that ball effortlessly. So, you know, again, we, there's a reason why he was number one dual threat quarterback, why he was the best quarterback out of the twenty twenty recruiting class. You know, I, you know, I'm in awe every time I see him throw the football, just how much zip he can throw it at, at his size without really putting too much power into it. It's just extremely impressive to see. Um but I again I, I it's just you know he's the future. Um, at this point, it's not really that shocking. Uh, you know, you kind of want to see him throw the ball more. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't throw the ball more. But again, with the two young running backs and you know the way our offensive line was was blocking, can't really blame Sarkeesian for playing a more conservative game plan. But uh, again, yeah, very very impressed with the, just very very impressed with the young players overall. All right, uh, final final thought, and we're on with uh, Jarek from Buffalo. Give me a final thought on this game as we kind of turn the page to Auburn. Yeah, uh, you know, again, I, you know, the, the run defense and our run defense, and I, I was especially say our, our offense on the side of the ball, uh, as far as the offensive line was very, very impressive. I definitely think that going into next week, uh, we need to keep that, keep that momentum, keep that same energy because Auburn is a physical team that, you know, they're a scrappy team. They're very, very physical. They can run the football very, very well. They got a great running back in Tank Bigsby. Um, obviously, we have nightmares from what happened last year against that game against Auburn. So I think that. This was a great tune-up game, especially against a good, uh, a great, uh, a pretty good defense um, with the physical front, and you know, arguably one of the best cornerbacks in the country was Kelvin Joseph. I definitely thought that this was a great test for Alabama, and I think that they passed with all flying colors. We'll see what happens going into next week against Auburn, um, but should be a good one. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling. We always appreciate the dialogue. You always bring so much to the show. So uh, we'll catch up with you uh, next time. And uh, good luck to uh, your Bills as uh, I, I know you got, uh, you're got you you're part of the Bills Mafia. <laughs> yep. Still recovering. Still yeah, recovering well, from Sunday. That's that's how it goes, you know. I mean, try, try being a 49er fan. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, a, it's a long yeah. season. But uh, thanks for calling in, Jack. We appreciate it, buddy. Yep, no problem. All right. I was our good buddy, uh, Jarek from Buffalo. Um, we're going to take our uh, next caller right now. And uh, we got Cam from uh, Brunswick, GA. Wants to talk about the game overall. 
Cam, what's up, hey, buddy? What's up, guy? How you doing, man? Hey, man. Thanks for sticking around during uh, the watch party and um, you know calling in tonight. We appreciate it. What is uh, your, your take on this game tonight? Hey, man. I was just uh, enjoying the Alabama win and uh, you know just seeing them smother out Kentucky and you know really give them a good punch and uh, sixty. What was the score? Sixty-three, 63 to three. To I mean, three, yeah. You know, we talked about this Alabama defense all year and. Uh, Look what they did, man. They held a team out of three points. Uh, the first half really doesn't concern me much how Alabama or how Kentucky drove down the field and, uh, you know, got a field goal and they had a, a, a bad snap on a, on a field goal. So, I mean, Alabama pretty much after that shut them out uh, from the end zone uh, the rest of the game. Yeah, did did the did the first half of of this game seem to lack something? Was it was it rust from Alabama? Were things not going well? I, I talked about it, you know, in the show opening. Uh, Mac Jones could have very well thrown uh, three interceptions tonight. I mean, there was a couple times in the first half. Um, I mean, he he still looked polished. There was a time he was seven for eight, um, but it seemed like the game almost was kind of stuck in the mud. You think that's because t Kentucky took the air out of it? I mean, I I'm looking at my notes right here. In the first quarter, they had the ball for ten minutes and forty three seconds of that first quarter. Yeah, man. I mean, Kentucky, you know, Kentucky, they are Kentucky. You know, they are who they are. And, uh, you know, they're not a high-powered offense. They tried to nickel and dime Alabama early in the game, and they did for most of the game. Five yards here, ten yards there, little pop passes, you know, and maybe gain a few yards on it. But it pretty much what it did, it just drained the clock. And, uh, you know, we're used to seeing Alabama and these other high-powered offenses kind of go back and forth and, take turns scoring. Well, we didn't see that. And, uh, you know, what we saw was Alabama pretty much took control of this game and uh, they didn't let up. You know, once they got a hold of it, they just kept the pedal down to the floor. And that's what I like to see. Uh, I like to see Alabama put their, put the pedal down and, you know, not come off the gas until the, until the fourth quarter and until that clock hits zero. And uh, they did that. And, uh, you know, Bryce Young, he come in, he, he threw his first career touchdown pass. I was kind of worried after the sack. But then he come back and made that little quick pass in there. I mean, that was something that, you know, uh, somebody in the NFL would do. We know that. And uh, to see him come in there and get command of that offense and drive right back down the field, I mean, it was just, uh, you know, it was good to see. It was encouraging to know what we have uh, as a backup quarterback uh, behind Mac Jones. Uh, I don't know if there's any better backups in the country uh, when you look at it, you know, from a quarterback and a second string perspective. Yeah, I think, you know, Alabama, I mean, the, the thing about it, we're on with Cam from GA. You're watching the Bama Insider post game call in show. I appreciate it if you guys could hit the thumbs up button. I thank you very much, John, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, you're right. I mean, when you look at kind of the depth of this team, I mean, that's something that builds Alabama year in and year out. Nobody has more depth than Alabama in quality depth. I mean, we got a taste of the young freshmen at, at running back tonight, Jace McQuell in 99 yards. You had Roy Dale Williams, who added on another 30 yards. I mean, these guys are the future of the program. And with Trey Sanders being out because of the hip injury. Um, it, it's time for these guys to start creating value for themselves, and they got that opportunity tonight. Uh, Cam, give me a final thought, man, before you head out. Listen, man, uh, Alabama, 509 yards total offense. Yeah. Kentucky, 179. Uh, you know, as good as they were talking about Kentucky's defense and how they were, you know, and they did give Alabama a challenge for Alabama to hold them to 179 yards uh, with a dual-threat quarterback. Uh, you know, I think that's about – I don't think you can ask, ask much more from uh, Nick Saban and uh, and this Alabama defense. They've done a good job. Uh, so, you know, I'm ready for Auburn. I'm, just, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Yep. <laughs> I'm ready to see what, uh, what it's going to bring next week. And, uh, you know, just roll tide roll, man. Yeah, I appreciate Go. it. Thank you very much, Cam. Um, have a strong uh, rest of your evening and, of course, a, a blessed Sunday. And thank you very much for calling in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Roll tie. All right. Roll tie to you. That was Cam out in uh, Brunswick. Um, you know, I, I think Cam brings up some great points, and I'll take my next call in, in just a second. Um, but when you kind of look at the depth of this team, um, I, I mean, so much depth and, and quality depth. And I haven't even shown the defensive stats just yet. I'll, I'll add the full stats in just a second as soon as I get them from the University of Alabama um, and probably in my email already. But, you know, it's a high point, Jason McQuillan. I mean, we knew that he was going to get some sort of opportunities, but to see him reel off uh, a nearly 100 yard performance was very impressive. 
impressive. Um, we got a chance to see Jahil Billingsley, and I think he was, uh, you know, he really had his breakout game. I've been talking about him for a long time, but to see what he was able to do tonight, three receptions for 78 yards, uh, very impactful play by some of these younger guys. And I think that's important because you build the quality depth and uh, Bryce Young again, I mean, two for two, 53 yards. It's not a large sample size, but the two times, the two throws that he had uh, were fantastic and right on the money. We'll take our next call. And uh, it's going to be Robert from Mobile uh, wants to talk about uh, Devontae Smith breaking Amari Cooper's record tonight. Hey, Robert, good evening. Thank hey, you very man. much for calling in. I appreciate it, man. Um, uh, Devontae Smith, you know, continues to be a touchdown machine for Alabama. Yeah, I guess we should have known sort of the greatness. Uh, I mean, a second and 26, we you are know, back then. Uh, which, again, we always, you know, focus on the throw that Tua made, which was a perfect throw. But Devontae, you know, putting on the Jets to run that ball down was just, uh, you know, just as impressive. And we, you know, we, I guess, we, you know, now that we said all the greatness that he's shown since then, you start to really, you start to look at that play a lot different too. Okay, we are, it was a combination of a great throw and a great catch. Uh, you know, the guy doing, you know, just turning on the speed to run that ball down to catch it. I guess we should, you know, we should have saw this coming with him. And I guess with the, with, with uh, Jerry Judy and the guys last year and, he, and a couple of years, he kind of got lost in the shuffle. And we, I mean, he, the greatness of Devontae was there, but. It just it kind of got lost with Judy and Ruggs and all the and those guys because there were so many. Yeah. And now that he's shining by himself, it's just I mean it's just lights out. We you know it's like he creeped up on Amari Cooper's record, but you don't do that. You have to catch the balls in between. But we just weren't you know the focus just went on him as much as it is now that he, and his coming back for his senior year again. You know, you've gone from a second round pick to a first round pick. So, yeah, you gain a lot of money that you get to make up for now. And I didn't realize Mac Jones until now could have gone to Kentucky. Yeah. And been a, a immediate start in Kentucky because yeah. started his freshman year. Mm -hmm. But once again, like Nick Saban constantly talks to these guys that, hey, he never gets asked what the guy did in his freshman year <laughs> when he, the NFL comes calling him. Yeah. Oh, how do you do in his freshman year? He never gets asked that question. It's what what's he doing now that that, that always matters to the scout. So Mac Jones, a great demonstration of hey guys, this one in the start is freshman crap uh, nonsense. It's just nonsense. It doesn't benefit you to start as a freshman. Uh, you know, it's it, you know the, your greatest benefit is those second and third year. That's your benefit. That's your money. Those are your money years. I was always bring up Marcus Lattimore as the poster guy for a great freshman year, but he heard it got hurt in his latter two years. And well, yeah, he fell off the map in, in, for the NFL. This, that great freshman year didn't do anything for him. And, you know, and back Jones, his perseverance, he could have started, you know, freshman year at, at Kentucky. Yeah. He might've had a good season there or two might not have, but he stuck it out and he wanted to play in the competition and he was competing against Tua and Jalen. There was zero, zero chance he was going to start his, you know, in the next, his freshman year or sophomore year. But he knew he had the goods and he toughed through it. So that's a testimony and a demonstration of what you guys can do if you're patient. That freshman year, it may be fun and all, putting up all those stats, but in the, in, in the, in the end of the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything unless, if, unless you do it those last two years. Yeah, I think when you, uh, I think you make a great point. We're on with Robert from Mobile, Alabama. I appreciate you calling in. Um, when you kind of look at guys who have been patient, guys that have waited their turn, um, you're going to get your opportunity at Alabama as you kind of work your way in. And I know the quarterback position can only be, there can only be one guy there. Anyway, and when you come in at the quarterback position, you're behind Tua Tungvalu, you're behind Jalen Hurts, proven winners, proven leaders on the field. And Mac Jones, I don't think a lot of people, I mean, we've talked about this several times. There was a lot of people that just didn't feel that he was going to be capable to have this type of year have this type of production and what he's been able to do in, in the first seven games of Alabama has him as one of the front runners for the Heisman Trophy uh, we got a small sample size tonight Robert of uh, Bryce Young your uh, your your takeaways real quick while we have you on the show of, of Bryce Young who was two for two 53 yards and threw his first career touchdown yeah the the, the talent is there obviously as we've all seen them before in the past it's just the little things 
that he has to learn to work out. And like, even like, I guess that we keep saying, even Mac Jones had to learn to work out those little things and the, you know, those little things that are quite the, the game management part mm-hmm. that everybody poo poos and, <laughs> and don't like to hear, mm-hmm. but that's important. <laughs> to manage the game management part. Mm-hmm. Once Bryce Young gets gets that on his belt, uh, it, he can uh, greatness will definitely be there. I do want him to get uh, be more aware of his size and you know lack thereof compared to those big bruisers out there, mm-hmm. and be a little more nimble when, on his feet. And okay, guy, you can't take a lot of hits that maybe Mac can take or other bigger quarterback can take. Mm-hmm. So you got to keep your head on the swivel and get out of the way quick, you know, get that clock in your head a little bit quicker than them. But you can't take that because you, you, you can't, you're not that big yet. You can't take that many hits. So the, the red zone, you got to learn not to take hits. But they passed it. But he finally got to play with the one. Finally. Yep. And that pass to Devontae, again, those two passes to Devontae. And he got his first <laughs> touchdown to the, again, to the one guy on, the, on YouTube called Devontae the Golden Gazelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Yeah, to, yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank thank you, thank you so much for calling in, Robert. I got to run to my next caller, but I really appreciate the dialogue okay, well. and uh, great points tonight. Appreciate it. All right, that was Robert Al Mobile. Uh, get to my next caller. Uh, we got Mike in Jacksonville up on deck. Uh, take your call uh, in, in just a second. But I think uh, Robert hit on some great points. I mean, number one, going back to uh, Mac Jones and just the fact that Mac Jones was able to be patient able to to wait and really understand that process and have fun with it. I mean, now look what he's doing here at the University of Alabama. I mean, it's it's quite simply amazing. I mean, um, you know, he's a front runner to win the Heisman Trophy. We all saw today that uh, Justin Fields, he struggled out there and three interceptions in this game. Now, Mac Jones, he, he didn't play perfect in this game, but he continues to have a very high efficiency rating and um, he continues to do his thing. And then you have Bryce Young, who we just talked about as well, saw another small sample size of him and what he's been able to do um, you know, in, you know, I think he's still thrown under 20 passes at Alabama, but tonight he gets his first career touchdown. So, uh, big time, uh, night for the Alabama Crimson side as they defeat Kentucky 63 zero. We'll move to Mike in Jacksonville. Mike, what's up, buddy? Thanks, Good for, evening, calling. Thanks, How you doing? thanks for joining the show, buddy. Hey, um, go ahead. Hey, Cal, let me, let me, first of all, say, you know, you owe me an apology, man. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you the reason why. Remember two weeks ago, and everybody kind of laughed at me and said, this guy crazy. I told you that Waddle would be back, remember? By the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And then, like, four days after that, because I think, I think AL.com is ghosting your uh, podcast. <laughs> four days after that, big news story comes out. You know, Waddle could be back. And, and the reason why I made that statement, and I'll get to my point, the reason why I made that statement is because I just had I just had surgery on my foot and they took a bone, they took a half inch bone out of my toe. Oh, man. And uh, I was, that was on November 4th. I was uh, in a walking boot from November 4th to about two weeks. And now I'm out of the walking boot, man, and I'm walking, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so, and I don't even have the technology that Alabama has. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying that, yeah. that they have. So that's the reason why I knew that basically he, you know, he, he should be back. He just got the broken ankle. So it's going to be swole. So in the walking boot right now, you know, cold water and all that, icing it down and everything and kind of going through the heat treatments. He, he should be back by January. Now, let me get to the point in regards to Bryce Young, because uh, it, it's, it's, this has kind of got me a little upset. And the reason why I say that, and I said this before, I watched Bryce Young play some of the top schools in the nation yep. for a whole year before he even came to Alabama. Mm-hmm. And you've got to get his kid playing time. You know, I, I've watched him in the last Handoff, 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 handoff. Sure, sure. And that's good for the backs, you know, the back of the back. But if if, uh, if Jones goes down, Matt Jones goes down, you know, you, you got to get this guy not to he's in there. Mm-hmm. And so you just got to give him quality throwing time down the field. And that's, you know, that's my concern mm-hmm. in regards to that. So, you know, Steve, Steve Sarkeesian definitely needs to give him a little bit, you know, throw a little bit more plays his way. Now, they gave him time on the field tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, though, you know, Handing the ball off, handing it all all the way to the end just doesn't do it. You know, you got to mix up the play. And, my, and the only thing I got in regards to, I was watching at the beginning of the game, man. You know, I coach, I coach more than Coach Saban at the TV. I'm telling you, I'd be going off. And I watched the defense, and, and you know, the defense looked like they was in game one, you know, the first game. But, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm alluding that to three weeks, you know, almost three weeks they hadn't played, so they got better in the end. 
But something that stuck out in my mind, and I think you mentioned this, I was looking at the quality of play coming in from Matt Jones. Mm-hmm. And if you notice the, the play before that, when he went before the interception, he underthrew the ball. Okay. And, you know, and then he came in and underthrew it again. And I know Max got a strong arm, so I don't know if it's something going on with the show. I just don't know if it's just rough. Sure. But they're gonna have to clean. They're gonna have to clean that up. And the receiver, but Mitch, Mitchy, I don't know what's going. on. You know, they they going to Smitty, but you know when when uh, Water was in there, you know you had you pick your poison. Yeah. And so you know Mitchy was open all the time. So you're right. The dynamics has changed greatly. Yeah. So they definitely need those guys to step up, just like you said. I totally agree with you 100. percent The dynamics have changed. Yeah. So something has to give when you're going into a better quality plan, a better quality team. Yeah, I, I agree. And we're on with uh, Mike from Jacksonville. And, and yeah, I, I think, you know, from from what I've seen, the offense has a different rhythm um, without Jalen Waddle there. And that's to be expected. And I actually just got a, a update on Slade Bolden. This was during Nick Saban's press conference, which we'll have momentarily right here on our channel, um, that he doesn't feel that Slade Bolden's ankle injury is going to be that bad. So we did see some Javon Baker out there. Um, but the offense, I, I thought, you know, it shifted around. And, and I think we're seeing a different dynamic. And of course, how much can we really see? against Kentucky uh, because Kentucky and Alabama just not on that same uh, level. Mike, give me your final thought, man, as, as, uh, as you head out. Yeah, the only thing I got, my final thought is, you know, uh, uh, Kentucky had a lot of players out, so I'm not even going to use this as a measurement stick. But when we start playing, you know, we get down and start playing Florida or playing a better offense, you know, like a, a Clemson or, or Ohio State or, you know, or you're going down and playing anybody that's, that, that's balanced on both sides of the ball. We're going to have some problems if we can't get this thing figured out. We're getting better and better. But, you know, if you got a slow start, you know, the, the team that's got, a, uh, that's got the same opportunity that can score just as fast as you can, like a Florida, you know, you can turn around and be on and never recover. So we just need to keep focusing and, and getting our offense together. And these wide receivers, we need to, they need to step up in the defense. That offensive line needs to protect a little bit more. And that's basically all I got, Kyle. And thank you so much. And roll tide. All right. Roll tide to you. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. All right. That was our good buddy, Mike. Um, out in Jacksonville. We're going to take our next car. We got Demetrius from North Carolina up in the deck. Um, here's a quick look at the defensive statistics, and I'll add more statistics information as we move forward. Uh, you got Christian Harris right here leading the team in tackles with 11 tackles tonight. You have um, eight of those being solo tackles. You also have Daniel Wright, who had eight tackles for those solos. Jordan Battle, who had house call, should have had almost two house calls in this game, um, almost made a, an, another fantastic play. Five tackles, three of those solos, and of course, that interception. Then you got Phil Mathis uh, in there with five tackles, Byron Young with four, Malachi Moore with three tackles. So, um, you know, I thought the defense, they only allowed three points, and, you know, people were kind of pointing fingers there in that first half. But Alabama, again, uh, with a big victory over Kentucky, 66, 60, 63 to three was the final. Uh, we got Demetrius, and we'll take it right now. Demetrius, what's up, buddy? Hey, hey, how y'all doing, Cal? Doing good, man. Thanks for joining the show, man. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to call in and, um, you know, I had to call in and congratulate Smitty. You know, yeah, that's the, he exemplifies, you know, the process, you know, stuck around four years. That's what we needed. Uh, somebody stick around four years and, you know, show, show the rest of college football, especially Alabama fans, that's how it's supposed to be done. Stick around all four years and be a good leader and good things come to you. And I want to, yeah, we had to shake off the rust from three weeks being off and overall, you know, 63 to three, I folks can call like they want to. Uh, Kentucky ain't, look, I said to say it again, we get everybody the best shot. Everybody in the whole college of football. I don't, we just, we just get their best shot and you no, know, Defense turned it around, and I wish they could come out. You know, play a little bit better starting out with, but, hey, I I see good things. I, you know, I've been preaching it for the longest year. I mean, game after game, we always improve. And that's what happened this game. Yeah, um, I'm proud of all three phases of the game, offense, defense, special teams. We made it happen. That's Alabama football. 
Yeah. On with uh, Demetrius from North Carolina. And I think you make some great points. And uh, Demetrius, you're kind of loud in the background, so I might have to uh, – I might mute that. Uh, okay. The background. I, I you're muted right now, Demetrius. Uh, but you're not. We'll, we'll keep you on. Um, yeah. I mean, the team continues to, uh, you know, improve. And you look at kind of the trajectory. I, I like to look at the team kind of as from an overall standpoint and where this direction of the team is going. And it's clearly up. I mean, you look at the last two games Alabama has played. Granted, it's against Mississippi State. Granted, it's against Kentucky. But 41 to zero, and then 63 to three. I mean, no one else in college football, in my opinion, is playing at this level and being as consistent and you're only getting better or you're only getting worse. Right. I mean, I know that's cliche to say, but that's the truth. And I think Alabama is getting better. Um, I know it's going to be difficult without Jalen Waddle uh, to con continue this fa to facilitate the offense when you play better opposition. But I think that, um, you know, as long as Smitty is doing his thing, Alabama is going to be just fine. Um, I want to ask everyone in the comment box and we'll get back to Demetrius in just a second. Um, what do people think about Devontae Smith returning punts in the later part of the game with Alabama up 35 to three and then Alabama up, you know, 56 to three or whatever it was. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Sound off in the comment box. Um, and uh, we'll go uh, back to uh, Demetrius. Uh, give me your final thought, Demetrius. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm here. Hope I'm in, I was in the hospital, a little quiet area, but yeah. Um, like I say, all three phases of the game getting better and better, and I know people understand it. I was talking, thinking, well, what are we gonna do? We run up against what is other teams gonna do when they run up against us? I mean, we have our offense that's dynamic, defense playing better and better, making adjustments on the slide. So, hey. I'm happy for I'm happy what I see. I think this is a national championship team, and I'm proud of the boys. The young men for stepping up yeah, these game. Definitely. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for calling in, Demetrius. You stay safe and have a beautiful Sunday, man. All right, you too. All right, our good buddy Demetrius out in North Carolina. Um, we'll take our next caller in just a minute. Um, I'm actually going to bring in our. Uh, our team writer, Tony Sukalis, as well, in, in just a second. And um, we, we do have Nick Saban's press conference uploaded. So we will have that, um, you know, available for you guys to go check out. So, um, but we're taking your calls right here on Bam Insider. If you guys could hit the thumbs up button, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, the thumbs up go a really long way. And, of course, Super Chats, always greatly appreciated as well. Um, next on the line, we got uh, Bama Greg from out in Bessemer and uh, wants to talk about some of these younger wide receivers to get them experience. And uh, we'll take the call right now. Bama Greg, what's up, man? Thanks hey, for, man. Uh, Appreciate it. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that uh, Smitty playing that late in the game kind of scares me and returning punts uh, late in the game when we got it, uh, you know, in hand. Uh, I, I don't understand that. Uh, I wouldn't have even had him on the field. He's a, he's going to win the Bolitnikov, in my opinion. Uh, so, uh, I just don't understand why we couldn't have pulled him off when we pulled Mac off and let some of these younger receivers try to get some catches. We've got, we've got the game in hand. And as far as the defense goes, our defense has allowed three points in the last two games. Granted, wasn't against, well, Kentucky has been playing good and, uh, the line wasn't, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> I just think that Alabama's defense is getting better and better every week. Yeah. And as long as they keep getting better, uh, you know, uh, Rutgers scored, what, 20, 24 on Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And Ohio State had some uh, a good bit of points scored on them today uh, on a team that they should have blowed out. Uh, Clemson got beat by Notre Dame. So, uh, there is no team in the nation playing on bo both sides of the ball better than Alabama. Yeah, and and I completely agree uh, agree with you. We're on with Bama Greg from Bessemer, um, and that that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you look at the consistency of this team, even after a long three week break from the football field, and for this team to come out. And I know we can nitpick, and that's kind of you know what we do because the the goal at Alabama is perfection, and there's a lot of things that didn't go right. 
there's a lot of plays that you know we wanted to see um and um but but i think overall i mean when you look at it from an outside perspective this team is playing at such a high level it's really incredible i mean to think that alabama is beating another sec team 63 to 3 i mean it's just it's mind-boggling and you're not seeing that same consistency from other teams across college football you're not seeing that from ohio state you're not seeing that from clemson you're not seeing that from notre dame you're not seeing that from florida so um i think when the college football playoff rankings are released uh, this coming Tuesday. And of course, we'll be live for that right here on YouTube. I think you're going to continue to see Alabama, obviously at the number one spot, but I think there's right now, uh, there's a gap between the number one team, Alabama, and the number two team, in my opinion. I just think that Alabama is playing at that high of a level right now. There's a lot of things that need to be fixed, um, but uh, you know, it, there, there's a lot more games to go. Uh, give me uh, give me another thought, uh, Bama Greg, is, uh, as we move forward. I just keep hearing these people saying that uh, we looked a little rusty in the first. Uh, well, we haven't played anything in three weeks, so yes, we had to get into our groove both on defense and offense. But once that groove started, and and I I, I gamble uh, and I bet on Alabama to cover the first half, and I bet on them to cover the game, yeah. and won both bets. So uh, you know. Uh, so I, I left uh, a very happy man. Uh, so you know, uh, you know, I bet the over, but I was scared of the over because I didn't think uh, Kentucky would score enough, and I think Alabama scored the the, uh, the over almost by themselves. So uh, that was that was. I mean, it was just a great game for me. I was proud of my team, roll tide, and I watched your uh show every single day this is my first time calling in and uh uh i just want to tell you i watch them i watch them every every morning uh and you know i appreciate uh what y'all do yeah hey thank you very much i really appreciate it Bama greg we appreciate the support and uh please call again next time thank you very much all right bye bye all right, that was Bama Greg. And, um, you know, Bama Greg hitting on that point about Alabama covering. I mean, it was a 31 point uh, spread for Alabama. I, I knew that Alabama, you know, were, was going to put it on Kentucky. I think, you know, last night during the Bama Insider Tailgate show with Mick Gillespie, we talked about Alabama. Um, you know, I felt it was going to be 42 to zero, something similar to that Mississippi State game. I didn't expect it to be 63 to zero. I know, know towards the end of the game, it kind of got a little off the rails. Um, that's how it is. I mean, Alabama's just playing at a, a, another level, and I get Kentucky's had some off-the-field stuff um, recently with one of the passing of their coaches, and th those are distractions. But it would have been, uh, um, you know, the same score no matter what. I mean, Alabama's just rolling right now. It kind of caught a buzzsaw. Uh, taking our next caller from Vince out in California, and uh, we'll do that right now. Vince, what's up, buddy? What's up, Kyle? How's it going? Appreciate how's you calling going, in, Kyle? man. How's um How's life out in Cali? Uh, Oh, it's going good. It's going good. Um, it's, uh, actually, still pretty warm out here. Yeah, man. It was, you should have seen today in Tuscaloosa. Just beautiful. Um, take it away, man. You're on the line. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to talk about um, the defense, and I want to talk about uh, Steve Sarkeesian. Okay. Uh, for the defense, uh, it's been about six – has it been like six quarters? We haven't given up a touchdown uh yeah well been, i mean because because yeah you're you're right yeah that is right yeah so we have yeah so we're actually we're stepping up really well um and i'm noticing we're doing a lot of like four-man rush three-man rush uh and it's actually working out nice if you look at battle he did actually really well um uh in that coverage in that when they're rushing three and sure. they got that extra guy back it's actually working out pretty well because we have three good rushers. It's like what DJ Dale and Barmore and I forget uh, who else is rushing, but we have three good rushers where we can do that. And then with our linebackers in the back with uh, Moses and Christian Harris, it's, it's solid. It's really solid actually. Yeah, it's a it's a very um, I, I like the defensive line. I, I think there's been times where, um, you know, Nick Saban has been kind of mixing and matching with who's going to be the best, uh, you know, at, at getting to the quarterback uh, stuff in the run. But I think he's been able to to figure that out. And I think one thing that he, that Nick and uh, Pete Golding have really figured out is they have depth. They have quality depth, in my opinion, across the defensive line, which is yeah. very important. They have guys who can stuff the run. They have guys who, in my opinion, can get after the quarterback. I mean, I think Barmore is still that guy. Um, 
I haven't dove into the stats uh, too much right now on, on the defensive side, but um, I, I think we're seeing that the defensive line certainly has a lot of depth. What else you got? Uh, Steve Sarkeesian, he's, um, he's like another set of eyes out there for Nick Saban. I think Nick Saban out of, out of like all the offensive coordinators Nick Saban has had, I think he trusts Sark the most. I mean, he doesn't even like yell at Sark like he did with Lane Kiffin. He just like, he says, let him do his thing. And he's so comfortable. And Sark is so all around solid. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, he lost his head coaching job at USC, not because of losing games, other things off the field. Uh, he's shown that he can recruit out in the South. He can recruit West Coast. But also his play calling is just perfect. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, his play calling is solid. And this, and if we play Florida in the SEC championship, it's going to be big because he and Dan Mullen are both going to go at it on who's going to call the best offensive plays. You know, you got – um Florida's quarterback, you got Bama's quarterback, you got both of them just gunning, uh, just playing perfect ball right now. It's going to be solid. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the point out about Steve Sarkeesian, and I think that's a name that is going to be floated around when, uh, you know, some of these bigger coaching spots open up because I think he's that quality of a coach. I mean, I've talked about it before, the resurrection of his career um, from, you know, the time he was at USC and then he went to uh, the Falcons, kind of dipped his toe at Alabama and now back at Alabama. I mean, the guy has done a fantastic job, and I think he's the the coach of the future that Alabama needed to orchestrate this offense to be that quick striking offense. Um, I, I have to look at kind of the scoring drive again, but I don't think Alabama had a drive that um, at, at least through the first five touchdowns or whatever that was over two minutes. I mean, the, the the team was just rapidly scoring, and a big part of that is because Alabama has you know the weapons, but but also Steve Sarkeesian knows how to use his personnel very well. And I think that, you know, all credit to him. I mean, he's a fantastic coach. I think, you know, he's the highest paid offensive uh, coach in the entire country and he continues to deliver on a weekly basis. Uh, Vince, give me a final thought, buddy. Uh, Yeah, no, we just got to be prepared for the, for the rest, rest of the rest of the schedule. And, you know, uh, do we have any news on the LSU game? You know what? I, so, so here's the thing I'm with LSU and everybody pay attention to this. Okay. Look, I, yesterday, well, let's rewind last week. I heard that it looked promising with Alabama and LSU, that game being rescheduled or, or kind of pushed back. And I'd put out some kind of some dates. And then I started to kind of look at other games that have been postponed or whatever. And then it, it didn't seem to line up really well. And I was kind of doubting that that game would take place. It's, I talked to a source today yeah. that said that they do still feel that Alabama and LSU will play. So I, I have no idea. I mean, who knows with, with this kind of topsy-turvy time that we're in right now, but I do hope that, right. that it goes forward. Now, it's not necessarily that that Alabama has to be LSU. And I think it actually be better for Alabama not to play LSU because then they would have an extra week to prep for Florida in that SEC title game. But if Alabama and um, LSU have their day, you know what's coming for LSU. I mean, they, the way they play today against Arkansas, I mean, it's just uh, not lining up very well. And I think Alabama would definitely take it to them. Um, but I appreciate you calling in, Vince. Please call again next time. And thanks for joining the show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Take Roll tide. All right, real tight to you. All right, Vince out in California. Um, yeah, so everybody kind of stay tuned. I mean, I, I don't know what, what's going to happen with uh, Alabama and LSU. I know everybody wants to talk about that. And I know er everybody's kind of itching to talk about Alabama and Auburn. You know, that's kind of the next uh, that that is the next team up. And everybody remembers what happened last year. And everybody knows that this is a redemption game. And I think when you kind of look at, um, you know, the the greater picture of the SEC that Alabama is, uh, you know, they're gunning. I mean, this team's a buzzsaw right now. Nobody wants to, to play these guys. And um, But over the, over the time, as everybody has seen, Gus Malzahn always has a good game plan for Alabama. We saw last year uh, the game in Auburn. I was at that game. It was unbelievable. And that was really a game where Alabama leaned on uh, Jalen Waddell. Uh, we're going to take our uh, next call right now. We got Mike out in Oakland, California, back-to-back -back Oakland calls. And uh, then we got Q from Bro Brooklyn in, in the queue. So we're going coast to coast, and uh, we'll take Mike right now. Mike, what's up, man? Thanks what's for joining on, the show. Cal? Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Go ahead. Hey, so I called you for the first time the day after – or the post-game after the Georgia game. Everybody on the line was worried about our defense. Everybody was stressed out. Uh, I commented back then, uh, 
whatever happens at Alabama, whatever is taught in Alabama, the players click, they learn it, and they absorb it. From that point on, our defenses look like an Alabama defense. Just want to put that out. Secondly, dude, nobody cares about the LSU game. If anybody's worried about the LSU game, it's Ed or Ed Geron, whatever his name Orgeron. is. Orgeron. That's the only person worried about that LSU game. Yeah. Everybody in Alabama is worried about a national champ- championship. Would you not agree? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that, um, you know, kind of when you look at it, I, I think if Alabama doesn't play that game, it actually works out better. Like I just said uh, to our last caller, Vince, who was right. also out in Cali. I mean, it works out better from a schedule uh, perspective. But again, I, I talked to another source this, today that said that um, that game still looks like it's going to go down. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. I know I've said, you know, I've kicked around some dates. Um, it'd be it'd be really interesting to get Nick Saban kind of off the record or, or even on the record about that game if he wants to play yeah. that game. Um, you know, because I, I think he would see an open week as maybe an opportunity for rest, but it could also throw you off. And, um, you know, sometimes because when you're in a, in a really good rhythm, you, you're just rolling. And, and I think also, too, Alabama wants to take it to LSU for several different reasons. You know, they, they lost <laughs> last year. And then, of course, recruiting in, in, of course, you know, what Ed Orgeron said after. So, um, you know, it's a rivalry game. If those two teams do play, I bet Alabama is probably the 28 point favorite. What else you got, Mike? I think that Alabama would probably be like a 35 point favorite in that game. But uh, my last thing, uh, I just wanted to let you know Alabama's going to win this national championship this year. Uh, this it, it, you mentioned something about a redemption uh, game a, a moment ago. I think this has been a redemption year. Roll back to redemption, like. Yeah. Nick Saban needs another uh, national championship this year. And I think everybody on Alabama's staff has been focused on getting the national championship. So good luck to whoever, whoever's uh, <laughs> lined up across the, the line. But uh, <laughs> Alabama's going to keep rolling. Uh, I'm going to let you go, boss. Hey, no doubt. Roll hey, tide, uh, man. I, I got love for Oakland, man. I've been out there several times. Uh, I would always fly into uh, – my sister-in-law used to live in San Francisco. So I'd always fly into Oakland and I'd take the bar over to uh, San Francisco. And, um, you know, so I got love for Oak- Oakland just like Najee Harris. And, um, you know, there's uh, there, there's yeah. so much – so much talent out there in terms of high school athletes it's unbelievable so uh thank you so much for for joining us man and um oh i also from oakland man i'm a big two short fan so um you know that's look uh, at him yeah i grew up around yeah. all them cats hey yeah. I, my brother my my kin folks shout out to shady nate of live wire music shout out to <laughs> damian lillard both of those are blood cousins so the Bay Area no, definitely and, uh, in the house. And, and so one, one more before before you go, uh, rapping forte, man. So uh, you know, I, I look at you. I, I'm telling you, man. I, I'm telling you, don't don't just kind of look at the suit jacket and don't think that I don't know my music. So hey, I appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, and uh, definitely call again. It's uh, a blessing, next man. Time. Y'all, be, hey, hey, everybody out there on the airways, wear your mask, take care of your family over this Thanksgiving holiday, and man, roll tide. Roll tide to you, buddy, man. Take it easy. Bet. All right, Q. Uh, Q, hang on. We got our, our team rider, Tony Sukal. This call online is still open, 205-850-0883. We're going to uh, bring in Tony Sukal uh, here next to uh, the show. And he's at Bryant Denny Stadium. Uh, Tony, Alabama, 63, Kentucky, 3. Uh, the, the spread was 31, Alabama. Um, <laughs> well, well, yeah, uh, kind, kind of what's your, what's your take from Bryant Denny Stadium? Yeah, I mean, look, when you first start watching this game, it didn't seem like Alabama was coming out too, too strong. I mean, it, this was a kind of a sloppy start from Alabama, and then they just continued to roll. Kentucky had its opportunities to maybe kind of like stay in this game a little bit early, but they didn't take advantage of them, and Alabama will make a team pay when that happens. I think Alabama had to shake off of you know, some initial rust in this one, but this just shows you how awesome Alabama's offense is and, and just how many weapons they have. And, Look at Devontae Smith, man. Every single week, uh, he, he comes in, puts in a stellar performance. Mac Jones didn't have his best game, but it didn't matter. Uh, you know, I, I think Alabama just – it shows that there's so many different ways that Alabama can beat you. So uh, that, that, that's really my take. Yeah, I, I think when you kind of, when you kind of look at it, um, you know, from, from an overall perspective, you kind of look at the, the, the second – 
tier players that got opportunities today. Bryce Young, two for two, 53 yards, throws his first touchdown. Um, Jace McQuellen, 99 yards rushing. Um, believe he had a touchdown. And then Roydale Williams, kind of the futures of the program. Um, wh what did um, what was your take on some of those freshmen? And, and, and then quickly uh, kind of uh, glance over what Nick Saban's kind of overall message was after the game. I think this game finally allowed you to have some some depth, right? I mean, that's something that we've been looking for. Alabama is just just what they've been able to do. Uh, you know, we've we've seen what they can do with the first string, but we haven't really gotten to see that the the backups come into the game. I think getting to see a, a Jace McClellan do as well as he did that's super encouraging. I mean, look, you you lost Trey Sanders, and, and maybe you think that 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 depth at the running back position is taking a big hit. Well, it doesn't it doesn't seem to be that way because now you got two more quality freshman backs that, that came in and, and and were able to produce like you know all the fans wanted to see that i think we've been waiting for uh bryce young to kind of make that first touchdown to, to get that first play he comes in throws a bomb to Devonte smith and then you know throws another nice touchdown pass i mean he really showed that you know he's capable if mac was to go down so I, I, there's a lot to be encouraged about for Alabama moving forward. I, I think it's really it's, it's a good momentum heading into the Auburn game, which is going to be probably their best, their biggest test for the remainder of the season. Yeah. So you look at this game. I, I like that you know maybe they have to just start off you know with, with a, a, a little bit of a slow start on defense. I mean, if you're looking at the defense, I think it responded really well. Um, they haven't a lot of touchdowns since the third quarter against Tennessee. It's been like a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a really long time. I mean, this entire year of 2020 has felt like 10 years. Um, hey, Tony, b before we let you go, um, can can you quickly kind of uh, sh I, I see Brian Denny behind you. Can you show everyone kind of just Brian Denny Stadium so they can check out what you get to see? The green <laughs> Check this out, everyone. This is Tony. This is this is th look at this. Brian Denny Stadium is so beautiful. Hold on, Tony. Hold it right there. I'm going to put you in solo mode. Look at that. Brian Denny Stadium, just such a beautiful place. Wow, just love it. Um, all right, Tony. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining from Brian Denny. You can catch uh, Tony's um, What It Means story that will be posted uh, probably later tonight or, or in the morning, and we'll have plenty of observations and uh, more back at BamaInsider.com. But thank you very much for joining us tonight, Tony, and um, you know, reporting from uh, beautiful Brian Denny Stadium. Thanks, buddy. See you, man. All right, Tony Sukalas, BamaInsider.com. Be sure and follow his great work. Uh, tremendous uh, asset to the BamaInsider.com team. All right, now we got Q from Brooklyn taking it in three, two, one. Q, what's up, man? Hello. Q. How you doing? Good evening. Uh, Dude, how you doing? Q, we, we went from Oakland. Then we went to Bryant Denny with Tony. And then we're now yep. going all the way up to Brooklyn, man. We're going coast to coast. Coast to coast, you know, being an insider. That's where you do, man. Coast to coast with it. Coast to coast with it. What, what's your take, man? Hello? Yeah. Go uh, ahead. Oh, man. Uh, first and foremost, man, everybody keeps talking about how great this defense is. We didn't play nobody. We haven't <laughs> played anybody but Georgia. And we just came up a game in Kentucky. You talk about Kentucky. Come on. It's Kentucky. They're not anybody that gave us any challenges at all. Yeah. That was the moment we could have ran the base defense of a four three, four four three, and we would have still been good. Did uh did anybody you know? did anybody impress you from the defensive side of the ball, Q? I mean for me battle, battle. For you? Uh, well, for for me, I continue to to really like Demargo Helms. I love the way that he puts mm. the wood. I mean, yeah. the dude can he comes with it, and yeah. uh, just like you were saying, I mean, Jordan Battle could have had two house calls. Yes, Jordan Battle, um, Demarco Helms, he brings that grit, that um, Bama defense that that 2016, 27 season when you had like Minka Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison, you had Eddie Jackson. Uh, you had um, Anthony Everett. Uh, you know that type of defense was. That's what he brings. That type of grit. And I, I like the the second. He he could be able to take that in the right spot. You know, I guess that's why he comes in so early because he's able to take that in the right spot. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, well, I'm sorry to pick on him, but Dylan Moses, come on. Yeah, I think he got him. enough feel. Yeah. He already has enough feel for the draft. It's time to bring Shane Lee in. Shane Lee, you know, you bring Ali Ko in. Oh, Moody is good. I mean, Moody is good. Why Moody can't play? You know, Devin Moses doesn't have to be in 24-7. It's just like with Najee Harris. You run Najee Harris so much, you forget we have Brian Robinson. 
Like, come on, we're just supposed to share the carries, you know. But other than that, we played Kentucky, guys. We didn't play anybody serious. It's yeah, not, no, no, I get that. But but, but when you kind of when you no. when, when when you look at uh, in, in a game like this, I look at you know kind of the depth. What are we looking like for for those twos? And just as like I, I was talking with Tony, who calls our team writer, you know, what did the freshmen do? What what are some guys who didn't have yeah. opportunities do? And I think when you look from that perspective, it makes it a little bit more interesting because I knew that Alabama was going to blow out Kentucky. So did you? The Alabama, yeah. you know, beat, beat Kentucky, beat the brakes off I, them. But what what about these I, these second tier guys? I I guess they was listening to 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 the show when when the, when a we as callers call in and complain about how he does not use the, his depth that he has. He has talented freshmen. He has talented backups. You have talented, experienced players. For the first time, we've seen Jarez Parks play outside linebacker. This is the first time. In how many years have we seen him Jarez Parks play? Yeah. And it's not like he, I'm like you play for Alabama, so you're not incapable, or you, it's not like you don't understand. You've been there for like three, four years now, so you. Probably no defense by the back of your hands, but this is the first time we actually seen you get off the ball. And he looks fresh. So why are we playing Christian Harris, Ben Davis? You know, uh, we got we got the freshmen in there, yeah. But, but what happened to Jarez Park? We have numerous of players that we need to get ready because okay, Dylan Moses, yeah. When we play a team like Clemson and Dylan Moses doesn't show up, who do we have that's behind Dylan Moses that can come in? Sure. I feel like the more you get Woody ready, you get uh, Josh McMillan ready. You get Ali Kale ready. You are playing Ali Kale only on special teams. Okay, he's a special team god, but he's also an inside linebacker. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And our receivers played well. You know, I, I'm. You didn't see in the comments. I commented. We finally played Xavier Williams. I've been waiting for him to get on the field. <laughs> number three, wide right yeah. receiver. We finally played him. Finally got his feet wet. You know, because he's he's gonna be able. He's gonna have to step up when uh Smitty leaves next year. Mm-hmm. I mean, Smitty's probably the only person that had a great 2020. He got a degree. <laughs> he passed by Hooper. He's about to go to the draft. And he's about to make the M's. So he got his bag, and he's enjoying 2020. The rest of us is waiting on 2021 to begin. <laughs> right? No, yeah, you're right. So, Smitty, yeah, Smitty's, Smitty's having a – he's yeah, I mean, a great 2020. He is having a great 2020. Q, uh, give me your final thought, man. Uh, please. Let's uh let's put the brakes on Auburn. Let's get the all the way to the national championship and show Clemson what they what's really what's really football. Because Clemson ain't that good. And I feel like we're gonna put up sixty against Clemson. Mark my word, sixty against Clemson. We're gonna treat them like that Kentucky guys. We're playing Kentucky. we played Kentucky. It's the same thing. We're gonna play Clemson and we're gonna give them sixty, you know. But you know how I'm gonna close it out? Kyle, thank you. I appreciate you. But God bless America. God bless Coach Saban. God bless Alabama football. God bless Alabama fans. God bless the sitting president. That God bless the sitting president. God bless everybody in this world. God bless. And have a great evening. Right. Roll tie roll. Thank you so much, Q. I really appreciate everything that you bring to the show and blessings on blessings, man. You stay safe. And uh, hey, man, did you get a chance to try that restaurant? Give me the status yeah, I, update. I told you like two weeks ago, I tried the restaurant. It's actually a good restaurant. OK, all right. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for missing that. So you've tried the it, yeah. and, and the backstory to this with Q and I. There's a New Mexico restaurant that opened up in Brooklyn. It's kind of like New Mexico themes. And, uh, you know, me being from New Mexico, it's it's you know, I, I definitely wanted to try some uh, New Mexico. Mexico food yeah. it's been a long time since i've been back to new mexico unfortunately um but q went out and he tried the restaurant said it was it was it was good so um next time in brooklyn man q you and i meet up and uh we'll, we'll go God out willing. Yes, yeah we will yeah and and, and, i told myself after i tried the restaurant i wanted to go i said i gotta fly out to new mexico now i always <laughs> want to go out to mexico i want to go out to arizona i want to try san diego i heard is the nightlife in san diego is amazing so I know I just want to make my way towards the West Coast, you know. God willing, I will. But Kyle, you have a great evening. All right, God man. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Q. Talk to you. Take talk later. All right. Bro, that was Q out in Brooklyn. All right. We got a uh, couple more uh calls in the queue and then I'm gonna wrap it up. <clears throat> we'll do um two more calls. All right, and we got uh Sam on the line. He's calling from Alabama, and we'll take that call right now. Sam, what's up, buddy? Thank you so much for joining us. What's up, Kyle? How you doing, man? 
Man, I, I was doing good. That first half, I was a little bit worried because there was a lot of missed tackles out there. Yeah, man, it came out real sluggish. You know, they, they was off for two weeks. You know, you would think that they would, uh, you know, when they get their first chance to hit, hit that field again, you would think they'd be excited about it, but it seemed like they came out kind of sluggish. Kind of stuck in the mud a little bit, huh? Yeah, I mean, and you know that 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 happens. I mean, it was it was three weeks since they had played, um, you know, but but they came with it, and, and I thought that overall they played opportunistic for the most part. Um, there was a lot of missed tackles, but you saw guys on the defense stand up, um, create uh, some plays. We, we point to Jordan Battle. We point to um, you know Demarco Hellams continuing to do his thing. We point to the fact that, um, you know, Alabama was in, in the right place several different times. I haven't uh, glanced over the stats just yet. I, I, I'm i pulling those up. But um, I, I felt overall in that second half, things got back on track from the defense perspective. I mean, it's 63 to three. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of worked through some of their mistakes. You know, they, they had some missed tackles. I was like, oh, man, this looks like the team uh, uh, that we played against Ole Miss. You know, missing all the tackles and uh, arm tackling, and but they they kind of stepped it up. They brought it up. Uh, I mean, they 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 ra raised their game a little bit. Um, I'm kind of like with Q, man. You know, I'm, I'm like Q, man. It's like you know, we 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 look down the road. We got some, uh, you know, we got Auburn coming up. You know, possibly uh, LSU, like you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, but if it happens, it happens. If not, uh, I'm cool with it. Um, and then, you know, hopefully Georgia, you know, down the line. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Kentucky, we knew that Kentucky, they was just going to come out and run the football because they didn't have a passing game. It seemed like you weren't even ready for it. So, um, but, you know, I think, you know, offense kind of, you know, they, they moved the ball on them. They, um, um, you know, Mac made a, made a few mistakes in the game, you know, just like Saban said in his press conference, you know, he, he got a little greedy on one play, and uh, he kind of cost us a little bit. But, um, but you know, you know, you know, he's gonna bounce back. We know he's gonna bounce back from that. So, and then you know, Najee Harris, you know, had his longest longest touchdown of his of his career. Uh, what was it, forty two yeah, yards? Yeah, it was. It was forty two yards, man. I mean, that was a. Uh, I mean, it, it looked nice, you know. Yeah, yeah, 42 yards. You would think this is his fourth year. You would think that he probably have some longer runs than that. You know, you know, Derrick Henry, you know, he had plenty of those type of runs. But, you know, with, with Najee being in his fourth year, you would think that he would uh, uh, have already uh, had, had a long uh, touchdown for his career. But, um, uh, that, you know, um, what do you think about Matt? You think he kind of hurt his chances today, or you think it's kind of really the needle really didn't move as much today? Uh, I know um, uh, Fields, you know, had a you know he didn't he didn't perform very well. He had a couple of picks today, so and you know tr trash. You know they kind of got off kind of sluggish today. So you think you think the needle kind of stayed the same with Matt Jones as far as the Heisman is concerned? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that, that was a good point out. And thank you so much, Tobias. Uh, I appreciate the super chat. It uh, really means a lot to us. Um, yeah, I, I think the Heisman stays where it needs to be. You know, I with, with those odds, I'm curious to see where Justin Fields goes, you know, after his three interception performance. Um, I, I didn't think Mac played his best game, but he was still very effective. He still had a, a very high uh, passer rating. So I, I think when you look at, um, you know, the Heisman talk, I think it's going to focus on uh, Kyle. I, Drass from Florida. You got Mac Jones and, um, you know, Trevor Lawrence, of course, whenever he does get back onto the field. And I know their game against uh, Florida State was postponed, probably canceled, more like it. But, um, yeah, I, I think kind of overall, you know, Mac is uh, is doing what he does. And, I mean, the offense, I mean, it's 63 to, to 3, my goodness. I mean, completely balled out. Uh, Sam, before I let you go, uh, your thoughts right. on some, some of these uh, younger players that got opportunities? Yeah, yeah, I was going to speak on that, but I wanted to get to um... – now come back. I come back to it. Um, yeah, the freshman running backs. You know, uh, it was good to see those guys get that get some opportunity. You know, I'm kind of like you. Also, I kind of want to see some other guys get chances. Also, I mean, don't run these these starters in the ground. You know, um, there are some talented guys out there. You can run them in and out. You know, give them guys a breather here or there. But you know, and Devontae Smith. You know, 
returning punts, uh, I was kind of like, oh man, yeah. uh, I don't, I didn't want to see that, you know, you know, we, we need him. Um, you know, he's a most experienced, uh, receiver right there. And, 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 you know, he's a senior at that. So, uh, but yeah, um, on defense, man, uh, even though he didn't make a, a lot of plays, I did see Will Anderson. He was very active, man. Uh -huh. And he did get like a quarterback hit, but, um, you know, it just, with him and it, it'll be great. I kind of often wonder what it was, what, what, what it would look like when Will Anderson, um, uh, uh, um, what's the guy named number 13, 13 and 14. Mal 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 Malachi Moore. Mm. Malachi Moore yeah. and, uh, uh, Brian Branch. Just when they become juniors, man, can you just envision oh, no. what, what these guys will be like <laughs> when they, when they become juniors, but, you know, Patrick Sertain, you know, he did a good job. Barmore flashed a little bit. And DeMarco Helms, man, he was laying the wood out there. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, he, he continues not to. Sure what, continues I'm not to sure what. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I just kind of, you know, going with you. I mean, Devontae Smith, I, I, I'm sorry. Someone just posted Devontae Smith. Um, DeMarco Helms, I mean, completely uh, just, just brings it. DeMarco Helms, I mean, he just complete beast. And, uh, I mean, he, he completely lays the wood. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's. I'm not sure why um, Daniel Wright is still out there. Maybe because he's, you know, he's been in the program for years. But um, you know, I don't know. But uh, last thing, man. Well, one, one, two more points. Um, Will Riker, he's made all of his extra points, man. So uh, I got to mention him. You know, he's 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 the most consistent player on the team right now, bro. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, you know, Devontae Smith was uh, he 144 yards. He has to be that. The ben, was it the Ben Derrick um, Award for receivers? Is that what it is? The uh, Belenikov. Belenikov. You know, do do you think he'll win that award? You know, if he continue to, you know, do what he's doing, is there any other wide receiver out there that's that's better than him at this time? Uh, I don't think so. I, I I you know usually I'll kind of you know come up with a couple other guys that are doing a great job. Um, you know, Florida has you know several guys that are doing a good job. Um, you know, but the, their tight end is is kind of their bread and butter. Kyle Pitts, who's been out the last couple of weeks, uh, but Devon Day Smith. I mean, I think when you look at kind of his overall production, how many times he targeted, how many times he comes up with these incredible catches, how effective he is. Um, you know, at scoring touchdowns, and not only just this year, but the course of his career. I think the Bolitnikov Award certainly would go to uh, Devontae Smith. I, I'd actually be shocked if he didn't win the award. Right. And last thing, man, with Devontae Smith, I know some guys was, was mentioning on TV today that a comparison would be to Marvin Harrison of the, that used to play with the coach. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. But I kind of like it. I, I kind of liken him to uh, Deshaun Jackson. What you think? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, D Deshaun Jackson was incredible in terms of, you know, kind of that quick twitch. And, and I think that, uh, I mean, heck, he could be kind of a blend of both, if that kind of makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, tonight he looked pretty elusive. I know a lot of people didn't like him returning the punts, but I mean, he looked extremely elusive and that's kind of something that Deshaun Jackson had. Um, you know, Marvin Harrison, a, a guy who was so, uh, I mean, just razor hands i mean never dropped anything just so reliable um so maybe even a blend which is really scary i mean the, the guy's certainly going to be on sundays um i would love to for him to be on my nfl team which is the san francisco 49ers um <laughs> I, i'm kind of pulling for for because we need receivers i mean the 49ers need pretty much everything but uh Devontae smith uh right. certainly um you know certainly big time yeah, man. Yeah, I, I was. I, I think I was just mentioning Dev uh, Deshaun Jackson, based mainly off of uh, like the size, you know, the comparable size. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they both uh. kind of got a slim bill, you know. But uh, but that's all I got, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate your team, Jonathan, man, for taking my call. Yeah. And uh, man, I hope y'all have a blessed day, man. Have a have a have a happy Sunday too, man. All right, Take man. care, bro. You, you too, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna get to. Uh our uh our last caller of the evening and uh tobias has been hooking us up with uh the super chats but before i get uh to tobias and um, he's calling out from fresno uh my my producer behind the, the boards um john has just informed me that um look at these stats right here okay check this out dylan moses did not record a tackle can you believe that right i mean is that right, John? Right? I mean, I, I don't. I mean, 
that's I'm not seeing him on there. He just notified me. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna take our last caller, and uh, we got uh, Tobias on. Hey, Tobias, what's up? Hey, what's man? going on? Thank what's you. What's so going much. on, Kyle? Hey, man. First of all, thank you so much, man, for the super chats. Like, you don't you don't understand how much that helps our show, helps our channel. Um, and I'm just really grateful that that you would super chat and, and give us an opportunity. I mean, that is, um, I'm just really grateful. So thank you so much. I know you're calling out from uh, Fresno. We've had our callers from, you know, Fresno, from Brooklyn, from Oakland, uh, right here from the great state of Alabama. So now you're on, man. Take it away. Yes, sir. No, man. No, actually, I know how, how much is, is necessary because I'm in ministry and people don't realize how much that goes a long way when you sacrifice some long hours, putting in the work, putting on the creativity and, and they just see it working and not realizing all that goes on throughout the week, man. So that's that's why I always drop it in when I, if I'm going to receive that, man, I'm going to drop it into it. But so I appreciate what you guys do. But man, today I, I think um I was on that chat when you guys were doing it. by the way, I love that, man. You guys keep doing that. The uh you know, like you guys are live, but we're just watching the game. Because yeah. in COVID, man, we need that. Because normally I would have like a ton of uh brothers over yeah. to the house and we'd be watching the game together and now with COVID in California. Okay. We can't do that. So Yeah, thank you so uh, much. It's I always wonder about the watch party because, you know, Trey, you know, I have him over here. got to feed him the Jimmy John's and, um, you know, we hang out and, um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people watching because because everybody wants wants to watch the game. But the thought process is, look, we'll give everybody kind of, you know, an opportunity to just get together and, and just talk and just kind of watch football. So, no, I appreciate the feedback. But go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so one of the things that I think is important is that Kentucky runs. And I think all fans and ex-athletes, I had put that in the chat too. Like sometimes we're not being critical. Uh, we're looking through an athlete's eye. You know, I play D1 football. A lot of a lot of the people on the chat, I look them up, they, they've played as well. So we're looking through that athlete's eye. And it's important that um, although this was going to be a blowout, we needed to play a team that all they do is run because our run defense is not where it should be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So – this was this was still a good game. It still gave us the work that we needed, as you heard um, Nick Saban say. Our eye, our, 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 our eye discipline, our fits not right. That's why Dylan Moses didn't record his tackle. Yeah, because the fits ain't right. That's that's the tr the proof is in the pudding. So it's not critical. I want to tell all the fans out there. It's not being critical. It's just the truth. And you go up against an, an Auburn um, and a Clemson. When they have a run game and a passer, you're in trouble. And the other thing I want people to like that I noticed is that Nick Saban, they're not changing the defense. Like today, they were still in too deep. They didn't bring anybody else up in the box. So they're expecting, they're trying to, trying to grow that defense and trying to teach those kids how to, how to play with just their three down, four down. They just want them to play in base, in that base, in that nickel, you know. So, uh, you know, I thought, it was, I thought it was a great game for us. The, I wanted to talk to about the Heisman talk. Mac, definitely, when you're putting up numbers, he's looking good and stuff like that. But I really feel like that uh, Nick Saban, that they're looking at um, Harris, you know, Najee. Yeah. I just see them feeding him um, like they did um, our boy uh, Henry. And if you remember... Henry wasn't in consideration until we went against LSU that year. He wasn't even, no one was even really talk talking about him. It was all about Leonard Fournette, Leonard yeah. Fournette. But when we played LSU and we shut down LSU, shut down Leonard Fournette and Henry in that same game, put the smack down on him, that's when he rose to the top. And I think that's going to happen between Trask, Najee, and Mack. When Florida makes it to, they'll probably make it to the uh, SEC championship. We make it there. When we shut down Trash, and in that same game, game Najee goes off, um, and Mac is going to go off, I think that's going to rise them to the top, and then it'll just be a kind of a, a small field with um, Fields, um, who had a bad game today. Yeah, no. He he looked he looked mortal. I watched that whole game. He looked mortal today, Cal. What you think? Yeah, I I, I thought the same thing, and I thought you know uh, Ohio State looks looks beatable. 
Um, and, and that's kind of the thing that I was kind of getting at, you know, earlier in the show is the consistency of Alabama's program uh, throughout the course of the season. You know, this team has continued their trajectory of upward. And, and, and like I said, you're only getting better or worse. And I think Alabama is getting better as the season goes forward. And I love your point about um, the fact that Jones and Kyle Trask are going to have their their day to go head to head. And I think all eyes are going to be laser focused in on what those two can do and who has the better weapons. And I think Florida's um, offense, they're very dangerous. I mean, Kyle Pitts is a tremendous um, tight end. They also have Grimes at the wide receiver position. I saw him make some great catches today, but they're going to have their time. And I think one thing that Florida doesn't have is Steve Sarkeesian. And the way that Steve Sarkeesian has been able to mm -hmm. have this mm -hmm. offense kind of paired together is, is going to be the difference maker when Alabama does go against Auburn, when they do go against Florida, when they do go against Clemson, when they do go against Ohio State, whatever it is. Because I think Steve Sarkeesian has found the magic method to – keep Mac Jones super efficient. Now, Mac Jones didn't play his best game tonight. I get that. We all get that. But his efficiency rating is still so high. And I love the addition tonight of going to J Jaleel Billingsley and kind of adding another mm -hmm. element because I think Miller, people are asking about Miller Forrestal. Miller Forrestal is a, is a great tight end. He's very serviceable, but he doesn't have that pop. He doesn't, you're never going to go to him and see him hurdle over three defenders. It's not or, dynamic. It, exactly. He, he's a great dude. Love, love the kid, right? Love everything about him. But you need added elements to the offense. And I think Billingsley is that guy. So that's Steve Sarkeesian getting him reps. And, and some of those younger guys today, um, you know, really stood out to me as well. Love uh, Jace McQuellen. So thought he really created value. Uh, same thing with Roydell Williams and, and Bryce. So um, overall, Roydell Williams, yeah. they, they, all, they all look good. Kyle, let me ask you this, though, real quick. Did you peek into Florida and Vandy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. You peek into yeah, that game, yeah, I right? Did, yeah. Now, now here, here's here's my thought about that because people go, I, I don't if if people watched it because I, I I watched it, I recorded, it, I'm gonna go back and look at it again. But that's what happens. That was not a fluke. That was not Florida old being sluggers. That wasn't that. Yeah. That was what happens when you have to play a team that has a running game, and Steve Sarkeesian is balanced. Yeah. We have the ability to speed the game up or slow the game down. Exactly. And Florida struggled against that team. That was a real struggle today, people. Just letting you know, that wasn't a fluke. That was a real struggle. They didn't know what to do with that Vandy running game. Now, they were going to win anyway. The athletes are better on Florida. I would say the same for many of these games we're seeing, like with Ohio State. They got five-star, four-star athletes, and that means something, people. I know everyone, yeah. you know, we like that kind of have the pie in the sky thing and, and got the Rudy movie playing in our mind. <laughs> but the reality is athlete, you know, man for man, my, my high school coaches say the bigger, faster, stronger team wins most of the time. Yeah. And that's a reality. If you got the right scheme and that's, that's what we're looking at people. So I, I just, I just wanted to put that out there that we got some good work today um, against the run. We cleaned up some things. We started getting our fits right. I love seeing uh, Smith, um, uh, D Lyman in there, those young guys in that rotation, because that's what I'm looking at is the big heavies, because that's what you need um, in order to play up against the likes of a Notre Dame, Clemson, Ohio State. That's where it's going to be won. That's oh. all I got for you, man. Hey, no doubt. Well, thank you so much, Tobias, for all the support today. I really appreciate it. Um, and I also appreciate the dialogue as well. Obviously, you know, um, it, it's been a great night with a lot of calls, and we appreciate going coast to coast and uh, you up in Fresno to Q up in Brooklyn. We appreciate all our callers and, of course, the Super Chats, which we're extremely grateful for. So thank you very much. I hope you have um, a great rest of your evening, and I hope you have a blessed Sunday. with Absolutely. Your Blessings. All yes, right, yes, sir. Yes, thank sir. You, thank you, Tobias. Take it easy, buddy. All right, cool. All right, fam. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh joining in. I, I know that I, I couldn't get to all my callers tonight. Um, I, I gotta head out um, you know, for the evening. I got some other responsibilities I gotta take care of on Bama Insider, but I appreciate all the feedback and all the calls tonight. Please hit the thumbs up, like and subscribe, and catch our content elsewhere at BamaInsider.com. We got a ton of coverage. Um, if you're curious to get behind that premium paywall, now is a great time um, with a promo that we are running at BamaInsider.com. You can sign up to BamaInsider.com for 
just $75 and you'll get a $75 Nike gift card um, that you could use for Nike gear, Converse, whatever. So $75 to sign up at Bama Insider. And then of course you get a $75 gift card to Nike. Um, that promo is valid while supplies last. And then also um, you can hit the join button right here at the bottom of this video to become a, a member of our YouTube channel. We appreciate all the support. You know, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. Uh, we have a call screener, uh, Jonathan back in the booth, who's doing a fantastic job to screen the calls. we got Trey Yanity. we got Tony Sukalas out of the field. we got Andrew Bone. we got Mick Gillespie. So, you know, a, a lot of moving parts. So all of the support uh, really means a great deal. And then of course, you know, you can always find me. And I want to make sure that you guys always have the best experience because you guys make up the show and you guys make up, um, you know, you're, you're the reason we got 40,000 subscribers right here on YouTube. So I'll catch you guys later. Have a beautiful Sunday. Enjoy it with your family. And uh, we'll catch you soon next time right here on BamaInsider.com.